Hey, Ron Moody here, the Untalented Artist. Coming at you again. And we are talking about the series that we have started on reproducing a clipper ship. A clipper ship painting was done in 1971 at the age of 14 in my art teacher's garage, Mashiko Borman. And we're attempting to reproduce this because I pretty much have destroyed the painting when I took it off of a failed canvas panel. So I did apply some restore liquid to the surface so it's still damaged, but yet it looks a little better. So today we said we would talk about planning. Planning. So the first thing that we planned is sketching out the drawing to be done by coordinates, by squares, matching the squares or rectangles on the original. And the second item was to draw out and locate the boat and the and the sails in a pretty pretty accurate positions. Uh, you know, make sure that we're pretty much on target. The main things, uh, the the uh, waves, the the shore, the horizon on the shore. Uh, the uh, large clouds. And so we have planned all of that. We've sketched it all out on the new, the new 18 by 24 canvas. The next thing is, uh, this is kind of like the general rule of painting anything. You know, I do, do a lot of house painting and it's tempting when you're going around a corner and you can't see something just to say that's good enough, let me just slap some paint on there. And the rule is, if you can't see it, don't paint it. And so here, with this clipper ship drawing, if you can't see the colors, don't paint it. Unless you plan on making a totally different theme to the painting. This is a sepia tone. A sepia tone being... Uh, monochromatic tones of brown with slight variations within the brown itself. And so I see in the ocean, we've got uh, one tone in the darkness of the sky is a deeper, more rich tone. Uh, and in the clouds, uh, a yellowish tone. So the first step of my planning is to know what my colors are going to be. So I've taken, taken my palette and I've mixed colors on it. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. And I have taken even uh, ultramarine blue. Um, magenta, magenta red and then even some darker tones of green, like a, a sap green. And we've taken those, put them on our palette and tried to mix our colors on a trial basis before we start laying them down. So in my new paint, so what we've done, We've taken, taken a wash. We've taken some li liquid fine detail uh, medium, mixed it with burnt sienna, burnt umber, and I washed the entire sky and the water to begin with. And I used the medium because it dries so it dries so quickly, which is really nice. So it's dry overnight and you can come back the next day and I put another coat down, but I 
I looked at the ocean, I looked at the water in the original, and I still see the water in the original looks almost uh, like a chocolate color. Whereas the sky in the original is really dark. In uh, both corners, you'll see the sky is very, very dark. And so I mix the paint a second time with the liquid again and then washed it washed it on my painting one more time and it got it darker and i noticed that that the dark areas in the corners of the sky seem to be pretty close and uh so what i had what i had done was I took, I took those cut umber, burnt sienna, and I deepened and enriched it with ultramarine blue and even uh, some magenta and some sap green. And that made the colors very, very rich and uh, felt really good about it. And then as we look at our painting, we keep thinking about what should we do next? And as you look at the original painting, you see there's a lot of ropes in different areas that if, if, we, took, if we took the background between the sails and if we went ahead and drew the ropes in, we'd have to do it twice. So in thinking ahead and planning ahead, we try to minimize doing things twice. So like we said before, we like to work from the back, background towards the front. And so I've taken some of the larger things and the edges, the dark edges of the uh, the sails and so I've taken the dark edges of the sails and kind of got started on that a little bit and you notice well I left the moon empty because um it's not time to put, put the moon in maybe we'll do that about last and some of the areas for the lighter clouds I I just left the first wash alone didn't add any more to it and then I went ahead and darkened up the boat. It still is not the right chocolatey color. And you know, I don't know. One of, one of my goals on this is not just to paint a reproduction. I want to get it as accurate as possible. But... On the other side, I want it to be more realistic than what it was originally. And so I've got some ways to go, but I noticed that uh, in looking at the original clipper ship, I noticed where the, the light is coming in. The light is coming in from the moon. And those areas that are exposed to the moon should be lit up and those areas that are in the shadow of the moon should be darker and i noticed that this side of the ship should in general be in the shade and i noticed that these cloud these uh, waves are bright whereas they should be it should be darkened a bit. So that's a couple of things that I'm looking to to change uh, w during the planning stage. So the next step is going to be taking the clipper ship, work on the sails. 
get the sails looking like the sails originally. And uh, then we'll start working on those lighter clouds in the background next to the moon. I did jump ahead a little bit and you'll notice that I did do a little advanced work on the clouds in the right side because I felt that the clouds and, and the background clouds, the, the dark, deep colors was, was really nice. It's not exactly the way it is in the original, but I felt it was, had a rich feeling to it. And as I made a few clouds there, it, it really kind of showed up nicely. So I believe that we'll stick with that, but maybe add a little yellow tint to it down the road. I'm not seeing in the planning stages, the last things that we'll do will be once, once the background behind the sails is the clouds and the background is the way I want it. Then we can put in all of our roping and in the, uh, the front, whatever this thing is called, the part of the part of the ship. And the last step will be to, uh, work on, work on the ocean, uh, other waves. And that's going to be, uh, new territory for me. I have never done waves like this. That's why I believe that Mashiko did pretty much all of them. So I look at the painting and I go a little closer to the painting and I look at the, the technique, the brush strokes of the white caps of the waves. And I'll study that and try to figure out how I will get my wave caps white and then blend blend down into the darker areas of the water. Well, stay tuned for next time. We'll see you then.